Welcome back to MovementProfessional.com. Today we're going to go over the concept of the anterior pelvic tilt. This is one of the more important concepts uh, when dealing with strength training whenever you're working with hip extension movements or posterior chain strengthening movements. Because the idea of the having an anterior pelvic tilt versus having a neutral pelvis makes all the difference in, in basically whether you're doing what you're intending to do, strengthen the posterior chain, actually get hip extension, or whether you're just kind of perpetuating a further imbalance in your position. So what is an anterior pelvic tilt? Anterior means forward. So we're talking about a forward rotated pelvis. So if we're thinking of the pelvis and just being able to kind of do a little surface anatomy here is open hands touch the, the bony parts of the hips and your pubic bone right down here this makes it these three bones make a triangle so if everything's neutral these two bones here and your pubic bone should be flat should be in a straight plane down an anterior pelvic tilt is those top two bones rotate forward and the pubic bone rolls under so what you're left with is this daisy duck position where the tail flaps up all right and your overextended in the lumbar spine, you're into flexion and you're actually jammed up in the hips. So a lot of times we're making sure we're not rounding our back so much that we're actually overextending which just creates the pelvis to rotate forward. All right, so when we're thinking about movements where we're trying to create hip extension, if you're coming into this anterior pelvic tilt, you're actually not getting hip extension, it's still staying tight through here. So this is a very, very common position. Biggest reason why is that throughout the course of the day, we're usually in this seated position where the hips are flexed at 90 degrees for long periods of time, all right? And even, you know, sometimes internally rotated and over adducted here. But either way, we're creating a lot of tension and shortening of the hip flexors in the anterior part of the body or the front part of your body. So if I just keep this in mind as if this stays short, so I'm going to just kind of squeeze my pants, squeeze my belly and my clothes here as I go to stand up. Now if I'm a bit older and my spine's getting fused, I'm going to stay here and this is how I'm going to walk around. But most of us have the ability to look up and create a compensation where we can still see the horizon, keep our eyes here. So what we're going to do is this is going to stay tight down and we're just going to overextend. So now we're walking around with the tail wagging out. All right, so with that overextended position, a lot of times if, we, if we're just standing like this, we're gonna do all of our movements like that. So we gotta make sure that we're first aware of that position and how to make change there, all right? So you know, the first thing to do is just have a sense, can you even change this posture? Can you get these two hip bones and this pubic bone to be a flat table? And can you just stand like that, all right? So if the feet are turned out, it's gonna be a lot harder to make change there because you're gonna be imbalanced, you're gonna be more predisposed to an externally rotated hip position. So we wanna start by just getting the feet facing forward and try to find that flat table, okay? So if you can just stand there and you can practice that throughout the course of the day, you can, you can make a lot of change there. And then we wanna start looking at some of the hip movements that we do. So just starting with as easy as a kettlebell deadlift, all right, we wanna be able to Make sure we're standing here. We set the position first, and then we just drop the hip back, all right? So now there's tension across the low belly, as opposed to overextending where the tension will be all in the lower back, and the belly will push out of it, all right? So get this set, tension here, and then when you stand, you gotta make sure we also come back here. So the most common thing is people will be good on the way down, sometimes they're a little overextended, but when they come up, they overextend there, get a little bit of a butt squeeze, but most of the motion's coming from the lumbar extension, and that's gonna tilt the pelvis down for, farther. All right, so deadlift is a, a very common exercise. Kettlebell swing, another thing, you gotta be able to stay tight. That's a bit of a more dynamic movement. So when you come up here, one of the better cues is to think about the inner thigh zipping up and getting the bottom of the butt so the tailbone pulls under. All right, and then you'll get into a more neutral position when you're finishing. All right, you can think of any other movement. Squat, where we're coming down, knees are out, making sure that when you come up, again, that tailbone, you 
tucking under and not letting the tail stay out. All right. So you can think of many other movements. Some of the the more classic training positions for this are a bridge, thinking your feet are in the position they'd be for a deadlift or a squat, and I'm actually going to bias into a little bit of a posterior rotation so that when I come up, things neutralize. But again, hip, pubic bone, all on a straight table. All right, and then I can play around with the stability. I can kick one leg up, trying not to have the hip of the leg that's up drop down. All right, and I can have my hands here as some tactile feedback. All right, so there's just a lot of different ways to train that. One of my favorite ways to differentiate the hip movement into extension from the lumbar movement into extension is to use a ball, depending on what area you want to go at. So if I want to go at uh, right under the arch of the ribs here is your diaphragm, I'm going to go at that first. I'm going to use a softer ball. It's a little bit bigger. All right, so I took a little air out of this ball. I'm going to lie on the stomach. All right, so hip extension is just in this position, just lifting the leg. Putting the ball right under the arc here of the ribs and right into the diaphragm basically blocks me into lumbar extension. So I can only lift my hip up a little bit, but I know that I'm pretty much guaranteed to be getting hip extension. And it's easy to feel the glute firing. And if my back wants to overextend, it basically pushes into the ball. So I'm going to be creating some hip extension and a deep pressure release to the diaphragm. So this might be something that you have to build up to. You may have to do a few breaths, just letting the ball sink in and releasing that diaphragm before you start adding some hip extension. All right, and then with the ball that's a bit smaller, maybe about six inch diameter, right off the inside of this hip bone we were talking about, between there and the belly button, you got your psoas muscle, but even more superficial than that, you got some of your abdominal layers. So we want to get in there, and I'm going to open the opposite hip. This leg is an extension. I'll look away from the ball, reach up. Again, blocking. This can be pretty painful if you're really restricted in here. So you may want to start with the soft ball and then build the intensity of the ball as you can tolerate it. But again, I'm just lifting my knee about an inch off the mat, and it's blocked. So it's getting pure hip extension, but what wants to happen is my spine wants to extend and it's getting blocked there. So I'm differentiating that hip movement from that lumbar movement. All right. So those are two prep movements. You can do them before bed, but you can also do them right before a workout and just try to get the, the hip firing and dissociating from the lumbar area. If you don't do this, then every time you do a hip extension movement, squats, deadlifts, swings, etc., you're going to be just perpetuating more hip flexion, causing lumbar compression. I see a lot of anterior knee pain, anterior hip pain, lower low back pain, just from this dysfunction. All right, so work on this. If you have any questions, let me know. See you next time.